In this section, I'll be walking you through defining routes for your application using the Angular router. You'll also learn how to retrieve data before displaying a route and how to protect routes with guards. And then lastly, you'll learn how to load feature modules using lazy loading routing. First, let's define some routes for our application. So first I'll start off by generating a home component. This is gonna be the component that's displayed at the default route. And then I'll also generate an about component just so I have another route that I can go to apart from the home route. So up to now, we've taken the selector of the component and displayed it in the app component like this. But now we're gonna display routes. And so to display routes, you'll need to add the router outlet to the app component template. Now the app that we generated came with a default app router module. So all we need to do is go in here and define some routes. So first you wanna set the path to the route. Now passing the single coast like this with no path sets the home route. In other words, the default route for your application. Then you wanna set what component to display at that path. So we'll display the home component. Then I'll create another route for the about component. Then I'll just quickly go into these components and insert a heading so I can see these components better. So now you see that I'm on the home and the home route is displayed. And then as soon as I go to the about, we see that component there. And then I'll quickly add a nav bar above my router outlet so that I can navigate between these routes. So we have the home route. Now for normal HTML, you would just use the href. Here in Angular, you wanna replace that with router link and then the path to the route. So in this case, the home route, you just pass in a slash. And then I'll do the same thing for the about route, except this will be about and slash about. And now you see that the links work and we can navigate to different components. So now I'm gonna add a property to this called router link active. And basically this lets me add a class to this element whenever this route is the active route. So the class that I wanna add is just the active class. And then I'll do the same thing for the about route. So now if I inspect these elements, you'll see they have the active class attached to it. But you'll notice that the active class is attached to both of my elements, even though they're both not the active route. So the way this works is that it's going to try to find all paths that start with this path. So if you attach this to the home route, which is just forward slash, it's going to add the active class to all your routes because they all start with forward slash. So what you can do is pass in router link active options and set exact to true. Now this means that I have to be exactly at the home route path in order for the active class to get added. Then the about, it'll add the active class to any route that starts with slash about, but we only have one, so we don't have to worry about setting exact to true. So now you'll see that when I navigate to the about route, we have the active class attached here. And when I route to home, it's gone. So now we could use those classes to style the elements if we want. So I'll just style the active class and I'll change the font to bold. And then I'll just change the color to red so I can easily see that it worked. So you see the home route is now the active class. And then when I switch to about, we get that styling there. Now going back to the about component, I'll show you how to access the router. So you just inject the router dependency into the constructor, which comes from angular slash router. And now you can access the router with this that router. And for example, you can access which URL you're at, and you'll see that we log that URL here. And so you can do that for any component that's part of the module. Also, if I add query parameters to this URL, you'll see that it logs it, but there's another way to grab this if you just wanna grab the values of those parameters. So back in the about component, I'm gonna add another dependency, which is going to be the activated route. So basically, if a component is part of a routing module, then you can access the activated route and get a snapshot of the data from that route. So I'll just log this dot activated route dot snapshot. So I'll just log the query param map so you can see what 
the data that we have. And you see here it has the query params as key value pairs. So I can access it using the key name and you would just do dot get and then pass in the name of the query param and then we get the value there now you also have the option of subscribing to router events so i'll say this dot router dot events dot subscribe and then this is going to output every single event that the router gives off so you see as soon as i switch routes it logs all these different events, navigation end, activation end. So these are all the events that are output by the router when you navigate somewhere. And you can also filter these down. So I can add a dot pipe to the events and then I can filter this down. So I'll add the filter which comes from the RxJS operators. So now this event is going to take in the event and so i'll say only include the event if it's an instance of navigation end now navigation end comes from the angular router along with all the other events that you saw when we originally console logged the events and so now you'll see that when i navigate i only get the navigation end you can also route to a path that has an id so i'm going to go into my app component and set an id of five And so then in the template, I'm going to route to the about page, but with an ID. So I'll change the router link to square brackets. And then inside of here, it's going to take in an array. So for the first value, it's going to be the about route. And then the second value is going to be the ID. And now you see that the about route doesn't work anymore. And that's because it's expecting an ID. So I can go into the routing module and then pass in slash colon ID. And so now this will be a valid path. But now if I route to about, this route no longer works. And then if I click on the about route, you'll see that with an ID, it does work. So I'm gonna go back and get rid of this ID and change this back to routing just to the about page. Now I'm gonna show you how to route to a child route inside of the about component. I'm going to create a component called work history. So work history is going to be a child of the about page. You go to the about page and then you can navigate to work history within the about page. Then I'll just go into my work history and just set a heading here so I can easily see this. Now back in my routing module underneath component, you want to pass in the property children and then inside of children, it takes in an array of route objects, which is the same objects that define the routes above. So you would do path, and I'll set it to work history. The child component, which is going to be the new one I just generated. So I'm also going to go into the about component and add a link to this new route. And then in the work history component, I'm going to add a link to go back. Which you can do with two periods like this. Now back in the about component, we want to output this new route here. So you need to add a router outlet and that'll display any child routes of the about component. All right. So then I'll go to the about route. You'll see the link here. Then if I click work history, then you see the child route here. And then we have the option to go back to the main component. Now, another thing I want to show you is how to navigate from within the class file. So I'll go back to my nav bar and I'm going to comment this out for right now. And instead, I'm going to activate it via a button. So then I'll bind this button to a method called route to about. And then in the class, I'll define that method and do the routing from within there. So you wanna add the constructor to the app component and then insert that router dependency. And so now you can say this.router.navigate, then this is gonna take in an array. So now I can pass in the path that I wanna to navigate to. And if I want it, I can pass in an ID here. And so now you'll see that the about button works in the same way. I can also add query params after the square bracket. 
and I would just pass in an object and then a key value pair. So that's how you can attach query params to this as well. You see you get the same as before. 